Welcome back to another War of the Visions video. Today we're talking about the tactics event equipment because it's awesome. There's the Nagnarok sword and the Sword to Liege uh, accessory. And these are both incredible pieces of equipment because they are just so high value for the uh, small amount of crafting materials and books that they need. Uh, you can really make some powerful equipment. It's very free to play friendly. So you definitely want to be taking advantage of this. So we're going to go over which you should build, the types that you should build, Build and all the other information you need to know about the equipment in this video uh, and then we will talk about kind of what my plans are for my two accounts. Right before we get into it, I want to quickly shout out the Discord, which is again starting to boom. There's more people coming every day, and it's been super fun to get to know you all. So please stop by the Discord and say hello. That being said, let's talk about the Nagnarok. So this is an all purpose sword. You can use this for magic users, you can use this for uh, just any sort of slash attackers. The slash attack up is going to go all the way up to 15 on the plus five, which is an MR value. Uh, and as are the stats, so you can see on the assault version, you're going to get 162 attack. On the magic version, you can get 112 attack. I have a plus five assault and a plus five magic on my main account, and I use them all the time. They're just absolutely incredible swords. And the best part is, you can see right there that it doesn't take much uh, resources at all. 345 bucks for a plus five of this value is ridiculous. So you definitely want to be working on this. You get all of the crafting materials materials from the event shop, from the event drops, from the Final Fantasy Tactics EX1. Um, it really is just uh, too good of a sword to pass up. You should hopefully be able to make uh, a couple of assaults and maybe a magic. Uh, if you're making something for a spell blade or a red mage, then the vital is also very interesting uh, because you still get lots of attack. You still get lots of magic as well. So it, it is an interesting way to build the sword. I, I prefer to do assault and magic myself, but I definitely think that this is a priority for most accounts. And if you have the Excalibur, it gives you a little bit of breathing room in terms of crafting you can definitely craft the assault first and then maybe a magic or a vital. Uh, but I think if you, especially if you started late and you don't have the Excalibur, then you want to have two assaults. There's just so many slashing units and I've put a bunch of slashers down in the bottom there and that's not that's not even close to the amount that there are in the game. So it's, it's definitely a weapon that you want to be crafting while you have this opportunity. So if we compare this to your other crafting swords, so we've got long sword, sleep blade, and the mithril sword you can see that if we go for the similar amount of crafting materials with the long sword you're gonna end up losing a bit of slash attack on the plus five you're going to lose uh, a bunch of attack on the assault version uh, which is like about 60 attack there so it's pretty significant uh, on the SR the mithril sword again you're losing about 30 attack you're losing two slash attack on the plus five and then you're spending double the books to make the sword in the first place the one comparable sword for stats would be the sleep blade but if you take a look at the the books here it's a 1125 books just to make a plus five sleep blade and you do get some other stuff there you get uh, the chance to put someone to sleep with attack uh, but the the also the crafting materials are just so much more rare or expensive to get so when you compare the nag and the sleep blade it's it's really uh easy to see why the Nagnarok is such huge value and that's why there's there's just no reason not to be crafting these if you have the opportunity to. So next up we're taking a look at the Sword Legion, if I'm pronouncing that wrong, whatever. So this is a really interesting accessory because it's again very easy to farm and craft right now and it's going to supply some stats that we haven't necessarily had in this in this position with this accessory unless you're looking at like TMRs and this is going to be for me super relevant for tanks because with tanks you can often use uh, a TMR weapon in order to gain the two equipment slots for uh, added stat uh, bonuses that are not attack so uh, for example having a piece of armor and then having an accessory that fills another gap for uh, let's say your armor is defense then your accessory is going to boost spirit and 
I know what you're thinking, why would I use a TMR weapon when you might have the plus five nag? Well, you have to think about what your units are supposed to do. Like your, your tank isn't supposed to deal damage. If your tank can survive and keep hate for a couple extra turns, that's actually more relevant for your damage dealers to deal damage, um, which will be significantly more damage because they are meant to deal damage, your tank isn't, uh, than if your tank had a really powerful weapon and, and still wasn't doing that much. So it's way better to have like a Gafgarian's TMR on a tank and then to have uh, just super defensive uh, accessories and armor on or whatever else you're going to build. So this Sword of Liege allows you to, to do that with tanks uh, and it's it's really cool because you get the shield version has 12 defense and 6 spirit and the barrier version has 12 uh, spirit and then 6 defense. It really allows you to craft uh, a couple of these and really fill in the gaps in your team and then you can see that the this is going to be more expensive than the Nagnarok in terms of books and stuff, but you don't necessarily have to craft a plus five. With the Sword of Leash, you're going to get an increase in evasion rate the more that you uh, can raise the, the level of this uh, gear. So and by level, I mean the, the plus level. So plus one, plus two, plus three, etc. Now here's the thing. For a tank, you're not going to need the evasion, so unless you're doing a very specific Engelbert build, because he's a he's a pretty dodgy guy, so you don't really need to get the plus five for that. Now, having a plus five allows you a higher chance of getting stat increases, but we also don't really need that either, because there's not that many stats on this accessory. If you use some hammers, then you can easily finish it off if you have absolutely terrible luck. Uh, but you should be able to max the entire accessory just by leveling it to 50 even without seals so uh, and I did actually see on reddit that seals don't affect all the stats on this uh, so you should definitely check out the War of the Visions equipment calculator website to kind of see what the chances are with seals and all that kind of stuff so what I recommend you do is actually build a plus two and if you look at the chart over there that means you're only gonna need 255 accessory books uh, you get a plus two it gives you a little bit of evade it gives you a better increase a uh, chance to increase your stat values uh, and then you're going to get this super high utility accessory. So taking a look at both of these together, uh, which one should you be building right now? Which one should you be farming for right now? So it's kind of a, a mixed um, bag here. If you don't have a sword at all, then the Nagnarok is the number one priority to build. You have to get uh, a couple of these for sure on your account. If you anticipate in pulling more uh, sword units and, and you wanna have at least three swords for, for PVP, for guild battles and arena, uh, then you definitely wanna craft more. And if you plan on using a red mage or a spell blade, then you're gonna wanna build a vital or, or a uh, magic version of the Nagnarok. So I would definitely prioritize this first over the, uh, the Sword Leash if you do not have the swords and it's kind of nice because this is the faster uh, farming stage as well you're still gonna get event tokens and everything so it's still gonna be great for uh, farming the event in general now let's say you have the Excalibur and two Nagnaroks then you're probably looking pretty good to craft a Sword of Liege uh, and I would definitely do that uh, I would definitely build a barrier and a shield version and I might actually build more I'm still thinking about it right now but I already have one of each uh, at plus two ready to go uh, max stats which is very very helpful so I would actually yeah definitely go for the plus two and um, you would be able to pair this with any sort of defensive armor. So if you have an armor that is a shield type, then you might pair it with a barrier type sword leash and vice versa. If you have a barrier armor, you might use a shield type accessory uh, and then just kind of get as much stats as you can to your tank or maybe to your bruiser that you're trying to power up. You can also use this with TMRs, which is really uh, great to be able to use more uh, armor TMRs as oftentimes you want to use that armor slot for a crafted piece of armor rather than a TMR armor. This is going to give you some flexibility as well. All right, so I'm going to immediately throw a wrench in your plans for this crafting because there are two swords coming out that I want you to know about. So we'll talk about those next. The first up is coming next week in the Deep Dungeon uh, Tower mode for the Final Fantasy Tactics collaboration. And this is going to be similar to Rain's uh, Greatsword in that you're going to 
get it uh, through the tower and then you're going to be able to max it to um, level 50 just by awakening it you don't have to craft there is no crafting plus ones plus twos you just have the piece of armor it's like the Excalibur in that sense as well except uh, I think this is like rain sword where the stat increase is not guaranteed so the number one thing I'm gonna tell you right now is is that if you get this sword look at the bottom left here you're gonna want to grab those awakening materials from whatever sort of uh, shop we have or, or way we have to farm those even if you're not planning on building it right away make sure you have the 185 and the 16 uh, for those two different awakening items so that you can awaken this to 50 when you want to so this is actually going to help you kind of uh, fill the gap for your um, your sword uh, inventory and it's not going to be quite like a Nagnarok it, it's very close in that you're going to get 162 attack you're going to get 92 magic so this is actually already pretty solid for a magic user uh, and an attacker uh, but what you'll see here is with a passive effects it's going to get slash attack uh, 8 and then ice attack 8 so this is very very good for Agrius users and then also Gilgamesh can use this too so compared to the Nagnarok you're not going to get slash attack 15 uh, but this is going to be really I think it's going to be really easy to max uh, so uh, you, hopefully this is something that um, everybody will have access to and it's definitely going to take the pressure off if you're a new player at this point you could probably just craft one nag and then grab this uh, as long as it's uh, achievable um, and then go work on the sword of liege and that's going to take some pressure off but you still do want to build at least one uh, nagnarok we're also going to get the coral sword before too long and this one is a crafted sword it is going to be an expensive crafted sword with expensive materials uh, and also a high book cost and this sword is actually if you see here on the assault version as 124 attack so it's actually 40 attack uh, ish less than the the Nagnarok but it is gonna get the slash attack 15 to plus 5 and just by getting it to the level 5 uh, awakening you're still going to get 30 lightning attack even at a plus zero sword a non uh, modded sword if you just awaken it all the way to max and then get it to level 50 it's going to have plus 30 lightning attack so for very specific units this is going to be a huge deal so we're looking at Ravies and Orlando so this sword is not going to be for everybody it's not going to be a Nagnarok replacement but if you have Orlando you can think about it this way if you already have a Nagnarok and you build this for Orlando it's gonna push your assault Nagnarok over to another unit and then you're going to have uh extra swords so that might affect your crafting plans for this event if you already have two Nagnaroks and you build a coral sword you're probably going to be set so that's something to consider uh, but this isn't going to be something that you're going to craft if you don't have one of these two units so here we have them all just compared against each other and you can see again that the Nagnarok is going to have a uh, a little bit of an advantage in uh, some of the stats here for uh, for magic compared to the um, the deep dungeon sword and it's gonna have better stats all around than the coral sword and it's just so much easier to craft so this again this is another comparison that's showing you how valuable the Nagnarok is uh, but just be warned that there are more swords coming and you do want to plan accordingly Next, I want to talk about some of the possible uses for the Sword to Liege. So you can see I have it up compared to some popular armor choices. Now, if you were here for the uh, FF1 event, then you might have an Armor of Light. And if that's the case, it's actually going to reduce the need for a Sword to Liege uh, a bit. It can still be paired with one, but it's very similar in a lot of ways. So if you wanted to get um, the, the 12... Um, spirit for example over the six so if you pair the barrier sword of liege with the shield warrior or armor of light then you're going to get uh, more stats overall but it is a little bit redundant since it's such a well-balanced piece of armor in the first place uh, but if you look at something for example like the golden armor when you can get 18 defense on the shield version that would be a really good piece of armor to pair with the sword of liege uh, same thing with the iron plates you're going to get a like 15 defense on the uh, shield shield version and then you can get a further 12 spirit from the Sword of Liege and that's going to be a really good 
tank pairing for a lot of tanks uh, and for a lot of beginning accounts you're going to be able to pl uh, craft something like a plus one golden armor just so you can get um, the the 18 defense or you, maybe you're going to go for a plus five iron plate like I did uh, and then you're going to have this well-rounded stat uh, package that you can put together. But you also have to think about your cloth users and they're kind of in the same position. We've got uh, this smart coat that if you're using that for spirit, then until stat stacking comes, you're not using the barrier version of Sword Liege with it. But you might be using the shield version just to get a little bit of extra uh, defense uh, to pair with the barrier version. I think that that's definitely something you might do if you were going like super tanky Orlando, although I don't know that that's something that you'd want to do. Otherwise, I don't think you're crafting a Mirage uh, vest or a Scholar's robe, but if those are items that people craft, then let me know because I have not dabbled with those at all. One of the biggest things that this is going to, this accessory is going to allow you to do is to start using more TMR uh, armor. So we have hats, uh, we have armor, and we have cloth armor. And a lot of times I find myself not wanting to equip these because it's so hard not to equip the crafted uh, piece of armor that's going to give your units uh, a bunch of defense. But now you're able to kind of mix and match. There's some TMR armors that are so good in terms of giving stuff like accurate giving things like spirit, uh, agility, critical up, uh, but then you're taking away your ability to get defense from armor. Well, the Sword of Liege is going to have you covered, so you can now use your Sword of Liege to get 12 uh, defense and then use a TMR of your choosing that doesn't have any defense and, and reap the benefits of the stats from that piece of uh, equipment. So a really good example here that I'd like to pair is the Sword of Liege and the Kaleido Moon are going to be a really good pairing to get uh, 12 defense and 10 spirit. Uh, and, and similarly, uh, if we take a look, um, just looking for it, there we go, the scanning goggles again, uh, a really good hat uh, that doesn't have defense on it. Well, now you can have this hat on with somebody uh, and then the Sword of Liege on as their accessory piece. So that's definitely going to be something that you can uh, make your characters a little bit more uh, of bruisers. Alright to wrap up this video I thought I would share what my two accounts are going to be focused on for this crafting. So with my main account I already have a plus five assault and a plus five magic Nagnarok. I'm going to be getting the deep dungeon sword next week and I also have the Excalibur. So my focus was to build the two sword lieges and then possibly more. I'm kind of just mulling that over right now. I do have a surplus of accessory books to do so. For my alt account, this is where it's really tricky. My, my alt account is only uh, about 11 days old and I'm actually not at the point where I can solo the extreme or the EX quests uh, without units dying. Uh, so I'm using the uh, helper function right now to get other people's players and then our uh, units uh, and then farm that way but that's very uh, labor intensive I have to be there for the whole thing so right now I am focusing on Nagnarok I want to uh, ideally build a plus five uh, and then if I have time I want to build at least one um, sword of liege and then I would focus on a barrier first because I would be building armor as well that would be for defense so I want to get some magic uh, defense as well so this is going to be a really tricky one. I'm trying to balance uh, a mixture of uh, going and farming, uh, but then also just like plowing through the story to get the rainbow fragments and all of the awakening materials to get my team as strong as I can get them within the event so that they can start uh, auto farming by themselves and I can just leave the account to go do that uh, efficiently. So that's kind of where I'm at. And if you have a similar circumstance, then please let me know if you have any advice for me. All right, that's going to be it for this video, but thank you so much for stopping by. Don't forget to comment below if it was useful to you and to share any sort of tips that you have for everybody else. Uh, and if I missed anything, again, you have to call me out, put that right in the comments uh, and let me know. Otherwise, we're going to see you in the next video or possibly on the Discord. Until then. Thank you so much for watching this video. You can show your support with a like and subscribe and by checking out my Patreon at patreon.com slash Gaming. Until next time, keep it real, Mesidians.